I, it's my favourite film. Um, I love <laughs> I love Casablanca. Um, I just adore it. But I know that if I, anyone ever tried to remake it, they would be, you know, <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't get away with it. So, but no, I mean, I, I do it for fun and then never release it would be would be great. But I mean, I, I just adore it. Um, and I just think the the potential for the visuals and that are just so it's such a powerful and moving film. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it'd also be kind of terrified that you wouldn't do justice to it because it's such a good film. And who would you cast in those two iconic roles? Do you know, I actually also thought we narrowed the cat would be the would be the would be your kind yeah. of Humphrey Bogart stand in. Mm-hmm. Uh, very different kind of acting, but I just think Leo's kinda got that I don't know, he could he could pull it off maybe, you know? He can pull off pretty much anything, yeah. I think. Yeah. You know, if he could pull off uh, mm. hiding in a mountain from a bear. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe in his younger days, maybe Al Pacino as well, something like that, yeah. you know. But uh, I mean it's it's just I love it. It's a great film. So um also um in cold you'll see um there's there's a there's a couple of scenes um where you'll see um the weed um sitting watching a film, a Christmas uh-huh. film with Santa. It's actually Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, which is a <laughs> 1960s um, low-budget TV film made in the States, um, which is out of copyright. And because it's out of copyright, that means we you can stick it in the it, film. Yeah. yeah, and it's great because we wanted some Santa on the TV and bang, there you go, there's Santa on the TV. Um, so part of me at the back of my mind, I always thought, wouldn't it be fun to make a high-budget remake of Santa Claus Conquers the Martians? Just, <laughs> you know, bringing this to the public consciousness. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible film, but I'd love to do it. Well, if the public can embrace Sharknando. <laughs> well, aye, you'd think so, maybe. <laughs> now, if you had access to an infinite budget uh-huh. and can make whatever you wanted, aye. what would it be? Film-wise, or... Anything you want. I don't know. Um, I... Okay, here's a thought. Um, this is a, it's an absurd thought, but um, maybe we could build a, a hovercraft that would connect us from Kirkcaldy to Edinburgh. I would, I would spend my money on that. I'd be nice to get over there in 30 minutes. Oh, we had that. But, you know, it would, it would be good. It would, I would actually, no, I would actually have spent my money on that. I'd be really good. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, though, um, this might sound crazy, but I always feel sorry for Glasgow because Glasgow doesn't have a castle. Yeah. So maybe if I had an infinite amount of, of budget to spend and waste, because it would be a completely wasteful project, you don't need this, mm-hmm. maybe build Glasgow a castle, you know, in, in, the, in the kind of the old style. That, that'd be nice. Kind of say, here you go, guys. You know, don't feel too left out. Very nice background <laughs> for the pictures in Glasgow. Aye, that'd work. Yeah, but that, that's, that's a crazy, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being silly. You know, obviously that wouldn't be what I'd really do with it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say because, I mean, none of us have access to that much money, you know. So mm-hmm. I think... Um, when you're when you're in Kirkcaldy, maybe hopefully maybe have a bit more kind of uh, humility with with the amount of kind of money you're spending. You don't spend mm-hmm. it so wastefully. Um, yeah, I mean, if you had that much money, I'd hope you'd kind of do something good with it mm-hmm. rather than just throw it away. And we have we're very lucky to be in such a kind community. I think so. Yeah, you know, because as, as soon as you say to someone uh, in Kirkcaldy in Fife, Aye. I need help with something, Aye. you're inundated. Absolutely. Do you know something that's really inspired me recently is you know the Kirkcaldy Food Bank um, appeal. And the fact that they've raised so much money in such a really, really short period of time, mm-hmm. um, I just think that's absolutely remarkable. But, you know, there's so many good people doing great things in Kirkcaldy. A lot of them don't get the name of the headlights. They, they really don't. They just mm-hmm. they just do things and, um, you know, they kind of pass under everyone's radar. But we'd be in a much worse position without all these incredible people doing amazing things. And, you know, there's, there's institutions in the town that have been here for, for a very long time that still continue to do good things. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, they don't get the name in the headlights, but they're they're incredibly worthwhile and I'm, and I'm I'm proud to be part of a community that, that you know embraces these things yeah and, and no one should be struggling no. to feed themselves um, no no especially this time of year as well no yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's really heartbreaking yeah so I other creatives that are out there Aye. Gavin what would you would you offer them any advice any tips any yeah so, so there's a few things Um, first of all I should say my kind of longer term plans for kind of like trying to build up filmmaking within Fife mm-hmm. Is um, I've set up this thing which I launched in April this year called the Creative Film Fife Network, mm-hmm. which is kind of a, a voluntary network um, of you know different people making films, actors, you know, composers, makeup artists, all the rest of it, you know, directors, writers, and the idea is basically to try and create a a networking platform that we're going to host regular events and. Um, it, it, there's a lot of people who've really kind of got behind this. Right now, there's mm-hmm. a Facebook group which we've set up, and people are just sharing stuff now and again. Which uh, I'm a member of. Aye, which is great. <laughs> but the idea is to kind of, you know, kind of create that networking environment, and that kind of ties in what I was going to say in response to your question, which is that there are so many great, talented people out there. It's just about finding them and, you know, kind of having that kind of peer-to-peer support. 
um, because if you're working in isolation as a filmmaker, you, you can't do it. You're going to fail mm -hmm. um, simply because it's a collaborative and it's a social process. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing that I found incredibly rewarding getting into filmmaking is the amount of friends that I've made. I mean, there's so incredible people that I probably would never have met mm -hmm. um, just because we're mad enough to spend our Saturdays, you know, with cameras out and, and you know, putting makeup on someone and, and you know, thinking about let's make a film together and that's so rewarding so um you've got the biggest grin on your face yeah i mean no, i love it i honestly mm -hmm. do because it's such a rewarding process and you see people at the most creative and the most free um people in their day-to-day -day lives you know i mean if you, you go to work nine to five all the rest but you spend all your time um you know just kind of like doing the grind and you know you have mm -hmm. you don't in a way you're almost performing say you're mm -hmm. working a checkout at a supermarket which i've done you're, you're performing a lot of the time right because oh, yeah. you know you have to kind of have this kind of facade of you know perfect pointness etc mm -hmm. so having an opportunity to express yourself creatively and fully um in an environment with other people who are supporting you who all want you to to do that i mean that that's that's fantastic so um advice for fellow creatives you know there's all this stuff you could normally say put yourself out there blah 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 but i would say enjoy it like just actually take a moment to step back and realize how lucky you are to you know have people around you who are egging you on and saying good for you because mm -hmm. that that's remarkable yeah. Sorry, I'm absolutely in awe of a fight <laughs> of people. No, 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 no that's, that's kind, thank you. Um, yeah. But no, I mean, I, I genuinely believe that, I do, 100% yeah. think, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a remarkable thing to do, to, to work together with a team and, and to create something together. It's, mm -hmm. it's brilliant. And any projects that you can tell us about at the moment? Yeah, so there's a few things. I mean, there's always things that, you know, you want to you wanna go on to and, and do. Um, I have an idea in my head for this point sound quite cryptic and abstract, but I've got an idea for a project about a tree. Um which Kirkcaldy has some beautiful trees. It does have some beautiful trees. And, and my friends keep making this joke. It was actually my friend Andy uh, kept on telling me, Andy Mitchell, uh, he he helped on the film. Um <laughs> He kept on saying Gab's branching out. But no, the, <laughs> I know it's terrible, right? It's absolutely terrible. But no, um, that's his joke, so he gets full credit for that. Um, but yeah, um, Andy uh, waits to make fun of me for it, but I'm really passionate about this this idea. The idea is kind of like um, it would be a tree and um, kind of like talking about how um, space and, and, and location can kind of be um, kind of like a, almost like a... A vessel for memory mm -hmm. so for example um over the course of say about 100 years or so on you would see this tree throughout um you know all the decades and you would see people from maybe sort of like Vinto victorian era through to the present day well snapshots in time and during that we'd see the tree in all different weather conditions getting hit by rain white and all the rest of it but we'd see what the memories of the tree meant to people so for example you'd see a couple having their first kiss carving mm -hmm. their initials into it you see some kids playing hide and seek you'd maybe see had this idea of like a mods and rockers and one of them puts the the fag butt out mm -hmm. in the in the in the tree bark, you know, all these kind of moments in time. Someone scattering their ashes, you know, um, you know, somebody kind of like crying and you know finding you know solace and hiding away. Um, all the the idea that a tree could be witness to so many kind of uh, memories in the human experience. Um, that's something that I thought would be interesting to do. So um, I'm currently working out how to kind of animate that or or kind of uh, act it because it would be effectively taking place over a century or so. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea is, is very much something that I'd, I'd like to do maybe as, as the next project, quite abstract. Yeah. And I've also got an idea for a zombie thing. <laughs> so maybe I'll do some of the zombies, might be a palate cleanser because some of the stuff I do is quite heavy. So that'd be quite nice to do some zombies. You zombies know. in Kokori. Well, no, it actually, it's, it's an old, it actually, the idea would be an old folks' home, and uh -huh. um, and it would basically be um, this quite morbid. But the idea is that the old folks would be sort of dying off and turning into zombies, mm -hmm. and there'd be one guy who was having a sort of like. Um, have this sort of dual role of being the sort of the caretaker, mm -hmm. but also having to kind of put them out of their misery when they turned into zombies. So, mm -hmm. really quite a, quite a bleak, almost nihilistic kind of film. But I thought that'd be quite a fun little subversion of it. So, but that's a beauty of creativity, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's imagining or and creating that vision in your head. Yeah, I mean, and and that's the thing. I mean, everyone everyone's got a story in them. It's just about um, actually expressing it and getting it out there. And it's weird because a lot of people, um, you know, they think, oh, I'm not particularly creative or I'm not particularly, you know, expressive. And then you could talk to them for about an hour in the pub and they're the funniest, most lively people you've ever met. Mm -hmm. And you think, well, you've, you've got all this talent yeah. and ability right there as a storyteller. You don't necessarily have to be, you know, coming up with, you know, crazy, fantastical, abstract ideas because mm -hmm. you've got all this stuff in your head already. Just, 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 you know, put yourself out there, weigh it out, you know, and, and it mm -hmm. all comes to the fore. If uh, people want to find out more about you, Gavin, Aye. where would they go? 
Uh, well, I mean, drop me a message on Facebook uh, or Twitter or Instagram. Uh, I'm, uh, I've got the handle Gavros88. It's like Davros, but it's Gavros. <laughs> um, and uh, also, um, you can drop me an email. It's gavin at midgibytemedia.scot. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm always looking to work with new people, um, even just to you know catch up, hang out, share ideas, all the rest of it. So if anyone wants to talk, um, you know, i love to talk to people. Absolutely. That's great. And all the very best with code. Thank you. Fall. Cheers. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gavin Hugh, for holding the space. No, it's great. Cheers. Thank thanks you. for thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.